This is Twit. I wanted to talk about um, this, the creepy side of smart glasses, um, which won't come as a surprise for anyone who's really been following smart glasses, even, you know, as far back as Google Glass. But there's this project that some Harvard students uh, worked on called iXray. And what this does is they use glasses like Meta Ray-Bans. And what they're able to do is essentially use facial recognition as they're walking around to scan people's faces um, and then use reverse facial recognition tools to figure out, um, to, to find some URLs uh, with some information that matches what, what's what been scanned. And then using large language models to um, add details like a person's name or their job or, you know, addresses, relatives. It, it's just, it's so far reaching. Um, they're also, you know, able to find, um, you know, using uh, the interesting thing here is not only can they use tools that have existed for so long, but what they mention is that, um, the prevalence of large language models and and how good they've gotten has has made it easier to have this very comprehensive data again just from putting on smart glasses like Meta's Ray Bans and just walking around and scanning people's faces as they're walking by. Um, they mentioned that this is not a tool that they're releasing so that anyone can you know snoop on people. Thank goodness. It's kind of just to demonstrate how these smart glasses, which you know Meta pitches these as glasses that can kind of blend in and look like regular glasses, which is cool, but then also raises concerns about, well, if they just blend in, like when people had Google Glass and were dubbed glass holes, it was because it was like, it was obvious that you were wearing something that looked kind of dystopian and odd and, and you know, unsettling. Um, but these glasses are designed to just look like glasses. And so it becomes harder to tell, even if there's a little, you know, light that shows up when you're recording, not everyone's going to notice that light, especially in bright sunlight or if they're in a crowd. Um, so it really just does raise these concerns because I feel like we're already, I feel this when I go out, but I feel like everyone's always, not everyone, but there's a lot of people who are, I think, especially in California, who are maybe vlogging or taking videos or TikTok videos anywhere, but, you know, mm -hmm. especially in certain areas. And you have to be conscious of that. You kind of think, will I end up in the background of somebody's video at some point without, you know, consent and that's fine. I mean, it's public spaces. You can, you can do that, but this, this is like next level, right? It's not just you being in the background of somebody's video. It's them finding out everything about you. Um, and so they had this video that they posted, which was basically them walking around and talking to people and just sharing like, oh my gosh, are you so-and-so? Um, don't you work at so-and-so? And they had all this Whoa. information that they had just gathered, which is really creepy. And these people kind of went along with it. Like, yeah, I am that person. And it kind of seemed like this endearing, like, oh, I know who you are and I know your work and I've read your research or whatever. Whatever, but it's really just them gathering all this data super, super easily just by putting on these Bray Bands. That's pretty chilling, right? Yeah. I mean, with us, no, it's a sort of, um, what is that? Uh, dramatic irony yeah. uh, in the sense that we know what's going on. The, the, the person doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's What's interesting about this is it's one example of how we see uh big tech actually like this is this is big tech pushing for this future because yeah. think about the bella ramsey ads from apple um where the actor is but sort of starts to walk into a room sees somebody that they're supposed to know backs up and then asks siri uh -huh. you know who's this person what's wh where do i know them from that kind of thing yeah. siri tells them and then they're able to go on and have the conversation it's being pushed as a cool future feature, a feature that you would want to have, an, an option that you'd want to have. But while that is th that the way that that's done is through somebody's own, um, you know, data that's available, mm -hmm. where it's looking at uh, your location that you've shared that you've done, you know, you've opted, blah blah blah. Th having it be the other way around is chilling, yeah. but. I always come back to when it comes to this uh, idea, <sighs> there is a part of me that is very aware of the fact that we are all given when we sign up for a service, mm -hmm. the opportunity to read through terms and conditions. Yeah. And we are all given the choice of whether we sign up for a service or not. Right. And we do have a responsibility to 
understand or choose not to um, what we're giving when we make those choices. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tough because the sort of soft um, humanitarian side of me, which is a much larger side of me, is, you know, railing against the machine here and saying, um, you know, people need to be, we need to do a better job of telling people what's going on, have them be more aware of it. But there is a, a, a small part of me that I guess tries to have empathy for literally everything. And so I have empathy for the company in that situation. And I say the company's doing their due diligence right. in having it be in the fine print that this is the situation and that your data is available. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, as many people do, that it does oftentimes take object lessons for humans to learn, mm -hmm. learn like not to do something or to, to, to be better about something. And so maybe these are object lessons that have to happen. This thing where it's like, let me show you what it means because you've decided not to read through the fine print and you've just said yes, 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 yes to everything. You need to see that to understand the impact. I'm, I'm curious, Abrar, in, uh, anecdotally, in people that you've talked to that are outside of tech, mm -hmm. how often do you find that they have a deep concern for their, their privacy? And if you do take the opportunity to kind of explain, hey, when you're watching TV on this TV that you bought that was a budget TV, it's tracking what you're watching. I, I want to hear, you know, what's been your experience in, in that kind of thing um, over time. And if people are concerned about this or they're just kind of like, well, you know, it is what it is. I think that's exactly the problem. I think we get really excited about new technologies and we get really excited about, oh, this is this is a free service. If I can sign up for any of these social media platforms, this is a discounted product that I can take advantage of. And then you realize there's always a price, right? It's It's not... You know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as free tech. Um, and so you kind of learn a little bit too late what the cost is. Um, so we see people who do kind of have to wait for something like this to come out where they're like, oh, this is this is quite serious. And and it's not like it just sprung up overnight, right? We've been building up to this for so long. Um, these these platforms have been collecting our data for so long. Um, and so then you get a, a piece of tech like this. And, you know, it's, it's not just about the glasses, right? People are concerned about what glasses can record and capture, but it's about everything that it's able to access and what that bigger picture looks like. So, yeah, I think, you know, we who are in this space, whether we're, we're reading or writing these tech stories, we know what the privacy implications are. We understand the dangers, but we still engage in it. Right. And so imagine if you don't necessarily know, um, everything that's at stake and, um, and yeah, I think a, a lot of it is just, um, it, very much in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, <sighs> I, I, ce I celebrate <laughs> this, this use of the technology as a means because very clearly, you know, they're not making it available to people. They're literally showing you, look mm -hmm. at this thing that you can do with it. It's not great that this can, this can happen. Um, and I, I, so going back to the question that I asked you, um, answering it for myself, I will say that I have seen, which I've been happy about, an overall increase in awareness of one's um, sort of data value and one's privacy. And I like that that has happened, Yeah. but it only reaches to a certain extent. And that's been the fascinating thing for me is while I have seen more people showing concern about an app, say, tracking them, I specifically brought up the TV example because that is so far down the line for people that, again, anecdotally, uh -huh. I've explained that in the past and they just that's just one that they don't really care about. And there are a few out there where it's like, Oh, that's doing that. That's fine. That, you know, yeah. that makes sense. And it's, it's not to the level, uh, that we have and the awareness, I think that we, and by we, I mean, those who, who study this stuff every day and who, uh, do in different ways, read through terms and conditions and, and understand the implications therein. Um, it's not there yet. And I'm curious if it will get there 
or if it, because I almost saw there there used to be a whole heck of a lot of um, of apathy about uh, privacy and uh, especially the phrase you would always hear. I, they'd always kind of joke. I don't care if the CIA is looking at my stuff. I'm not doing anything wrong. Uh, if somebody wants to look at my stuff, I mean, I'm just boring. So who cares? Yeah. That was the refrain. I used to have that. That used to be my refrain. And then I, I remember the day that it changed because uh, a good friend of mine convinced me that that apathy was only making things worse. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, so I became kind of hypersensitive to it, at least an awareness of it. And I saw a decrease in that apathy, an increase in that concern. But I'm wondering if it's tanking again a little bit, mm -hmm. because it can feel a little overwhelming, right? When you just were at a place where you kind of have to accept, <laughs> and this is the, that's, that's the thing that I kind of struggle with saying that, but do you? You almost do have to accept that it's going to be out there. We're all having not just our phones now, but also our little you know lenses on our face and all this other stuff. And given that that technology is there, you either exist in society or you don't, but we don't really have the option to not exist in society. So yeah, it's just yeah. kind of there. I do think we've kind of grown numb to it because think about all the times that we hear about all of our most personal data being leaked, right? By whatever it was, whether it's a corporation or whether it's a product that has been violating our, our privacy. I, I do think it's so hard to still feel shocked or angry by it when it happens all the time. And so that's just kind of a disappointing reality. And, now, and then on the flip side of it, these companies clearly create a product that is valuable for people. And so they're not going to walk away from it if it's a tool that helps them connect with people or makes their lives easier. And it's mm -hmm. just a really unfortunate cost that you have to pay. I mean, that's that's the price that you pay for something that you want to use and find it difficult to remove yourself from. And even if you don't, you know, even if you're not on social media, again, there are ways that your, your information is going to be compromised anyway. It is so hard. Privacy I don't think it exists anymore. And I just think that's it's a tough pill to swallow, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats, or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.